like it was when I was a young yeah, soldier. Hey there guys and gals, and welcome back to the Ironclad Lion channel. What I have for you today is the long-awaited Grey Hair Garrison Guide, the second guide in the Season 8 Unit Guide series, and my personal favorite unit of Season 8. Grey Hairs have insane combat prowess, and are often underestimated. In this video, we'll be covering the Grey Hair Garrison Season Challenges, Traits, Veterancy Lines, Doctrines, Abilities, training yard demonstrations, and some live examples in the field. As always, I've got you covered and I'll have the video segmented if you'd like to skip to any specific section. Consider subscribing to the channel if you have been enjoying the guides, and let's get to it. The Grey Hair Garrison are a 4 star epic tier unit and are very capable for their leadership cost. What makes them a very unique unit is that they possess an arsenal of weaponry that the unit wields simultaneously. While there are other units in the game that can swap between weapons, such as the amazing Shield Maidens, the Grey Hairs have access to three different types of weapons, which we'll look at shortly. But first, let's take a look at their Season Challenges. First page unlocks the 3 day trial contract, second page unlocks 120 unit medals, third page permanently unlocks the unit, fourth page unlocks the Grey Hair Doctrine 2, which is very important and we'll go over this doctrine more later. The fifth and final page unlocks the Grey Hair Garrison Avatar. Awesome, let's take a look at the Grey Hair attributes and traits. Grey Hairs understand that complicated formations are for children, so 3 rank and wedge will be all they need. Their first unit trait is Grizzled Veterans, and describes how the unit can use a variety of weapons in battle. Every time they use an ability, they briefly become immune to control effects. As for the 3 weapons, they are as follows. Sword and Shield. This weapon can block while attacking, and can ignore enemy blocks to daze enemies. Long Sword. This weapon deals lots of damage and can hit multiple enemies in a single swing. Whole arm. This debuffs enemies to make them take more damage and has the longest reach. By the book is a special trait that triggers when a gray hair falls below 40% health or when their health bar turns red. While in this state, damage is increased by 25% and each attack restores 10% max health. This trait lets the gray hairs stay in the battle much longer than one might expect. Duty Until Death lets you cut off the Grey Hair Retirement Plan and bring them back to battle even if they are below the one third unit count threshold. This doesn't usually have a huge impact, but it can help to pull the unit back out in a close battle. Not one step back. And finally, the Grey Hairs have their leadership reduced by 15 during Season 8. The first Grey Hair ability is No Retreat. This makes the Grey Hairs get into their 3 rank formation, take a step forward, and become immune to control effects for approximately 2 seconds. Last Stand may appear to have an identical effect to No Retreat, but that's because the ability description is for whatever reason incomplete. Localization issues, am I right? What this ability actually does is boost the Grey Hairs damage, damage resistance, and self-healing abilities. This ability can only be activated while in 3 ranks formation, and being in a different formation will weaken the effect. It also makes the Grey Hairs immune to control effects. The last ability is Charge, which does damage like a normal charge, but has a boosted effect if done while in Wedge formation. If in Wedge, the charge will restore more health and deal more damage. These abilities are quite powerful and we'll demonstrate them more in the training yard. But before we do that, let's take a look at the Grey Hair Veterancy Lines. I have the top line selected as you can see, but I'll go through both lines and highlight the important tiers. Both lines share a Movement Speed tier, which boosts the Grey Hair's speed up to 5.1. Still not fast, but at least not on a walker. The first unique highlight of the top line is Breakthrough which increases block breaking by 60% total. This is a very useful tier, as it will let the Grey Hairs deal with heavy shield units. With more tiers of defense and damage, our next highlight is the second win tier, reducing the last stand ability cooldown by 4 seconds total. I think this is the main reason to go top line, as last stand is a huge boost to the Grey Hairs, and is what lets them power through enemy units and heroes alike. The final tier of the top line is Harbingers, which increases the damage dealt during Last Stand by 15%. Harbingers turns Last Stand into an incredibly powerful ability and lets the Grey Hairs take on any unit in the game. Being immune to crowd control and putting out that much damage is something
something special to watch, which we'll demonstrate later. Looking at the bottom line, there are several damage tiers at the start, with the first unique tier being Fear Nothing. Fear Nothing boosts the charge ability damage by 15% total. While significant, it takes 3 points to do this. Now looking at the next tier, and what in tarnation, there's rebels attacking! Give me a second here lads, gonna open up a can. Alright, we're back. Moving right along, the next highlight tier is Soldier's Life, which boosts health. Now normally I wouldn't highlight health, but additional health on the gray hairs is incredibly useful, and it makes buy the book trigger earlier. This means you will be hitting for more damage and healing easier. Sounds great, but you still need to be at red health for it to take effect. We have the shared movement tier here towards the end of the bottom line. And now for the final tier, Intrepid's increases last stand's damage reduction by 15%. Now this makes the gray hairs very tanky during last stand, and is a solid final tier. But of course, you want to know which one you should pick, and why. Here's how I see it. The bottom line focuses more on using the charge to deal a big slap to an enemy formation, then hunkering down and going tanky once you turn on last stand. While I understand this in theory, I don't think gray hairs make very good shock troops. If you push them in too deep, they have a very hard time retreating, and while intrepids will keep them alive a little longer, if last stand wears off and the enemy is still alive, what are you going to do exactly? This is why I picked the top line, as additional damage makes more sense sense for the gray hairs. Block breaking is incredibly important if you find yourself dealing with shield units, who are very likely to charge your gray hairs. On top of that, the cooldown for last stand is extremely important, as those 4 seconds will keep your gray hairs alive if the enemy team is laying it on thick. Finally, Harbingers gives the gray hairs so much juice they can flex on berserkers, which I'll show in just a bit. To summarize, I recommend top line as it makes more sense for how I think the gray hairs should be played ideally. The bottom line isn't bad, but it puts emphasis on the charge and damage reduction, which I don't think synergize quite as well with the gray hair playstyle. Now that I've given a bunch of angry nerds fuel to criticize me in the comments section for my veteran sea line picks, let's add some gasoline to this fire with our doctrines. Look at all that juice! First up, we've got a Breakthrough Doctrine, which I highly recommend for the Gray Hairs as the unit does all types of damage. This boosts damage output for all three weapon types against units, which will let the Gray Hairs shred no matter which weapon they are holding. As for the unique Gray Hair Doctrines, Doctrine 1 will increase health by 600 points. This is a massive boost to the unit health pool, and is absolutely a doctrine you should try to get your hands on. This doctrine is exclusive to Season 8 Story Missions, which I think is terrible and unfair unfair game design, but that's how it is. The second gray hair doctrine, however, can be acquired by completing the fourth page of the unit challenges, and boosts every damage type by 110 points. This doctrine is also amazing, and very much worth acquiring. For your final two doctrine slots, I'd recommend an additional health doctrine, and potentially an assassination doctrine, which I'll probably be equipping soon. Because the gray hairs have abilities that scale with health and damage, we want to maximize both of those as much as possible. A larger health pool will mean that by the book will activate earlier, and damage will be boosted significantly by the gray hair abilities and traits. So once again, I recommend both gray hair doctrines, a health doctrine, as well as breakthrough and assassination doctrines. I put that slashing doctrine on when I first acquired the unit, and I'll be replacing it soon. This combination of doctrines will give the gray hair a lot of juice. Now that we're done being spreadsheet warriors, let's take a look at the gray hair abilities and hit the training yard. When using No Retreat, we can see the Gray Hairs take a step forward, get into formation, and get an orange glow effect around them. This orange glow is their control immunity, and lasts for approximately one second. While this may seem short, this will also let them stand back up after being knocked down, if your timing of the ability was off, so it's more forgiving than you might think. When using Last Stand, the Gray Hairs also gain the immunity effect, which you can see again in orange. Taking a closer look at their three ranks formation, we can see that from front to back, we have the sword and shield in the first rank, long sword in the second rank, and pole arm in the third rank. Now let's take a look at the wedge formation, which has a different layout. In the front of the wedge formation, we have our pole arms. In the middle, we have our shields, and in the back, we have our long swords. This will mean when charging, the pole arms will strike first, 
increasing damage taken by the enemy. The shields will follow up, shield bash, and get around enemies blocking. The final row of long swords will finish off the enemy with a high damage strike. This wedge formation should only be used when charging, as three ranks is much better suited for defense and general combat. Let's take a look at using no retreat in combat. When you are about to make contact with the enemy, it's a wise idea to hit no retreat to get the gray hairs into formation. While in formation, the gray hairs will effectively overlap their weapon usage to make sure they are hitting the enemy with all three weapon types. No retreat is on a mere 6 second cooldown and should be used when appropriate throughout a fight to keep the gray hairs in formation and shrug off control effects. If you charge with the gray hairs, it's important to get them back into 3 rank formation once the charge is complete. Directly after a charge, the gray hairs will default to attacking at will. This is okay if pursuing a weak enemy, but in most cases, you should be ready for a counter-attack and get back into 3 rank by using no retreat. That's the basics of each ability. Now let's look at advanced mechanics. When using no retreat, the gray hairs will form the 3 rank formation depending on your camera's facing, but the movement of their formation is based on their own location. This can get a little weird to manage if you are trying to command the gray hairs from a distance, as you'll need to twist your camera to adjust their facing, to the point you may not be looking in the unit's direction at all. When activating Last Stand, the gray hairs will flash red. This means the ability is in effect. Last Stand may only be activated while in 3 ranks formation, and is a crucial ability to time well in combat. Activating Last Stand does not move the gray hairs like No Retreat does, so it's advised to use No Retreat to quickly and effectively get them into formation. While a subtle effect, Last Stand causes the gray hairs' weapons to glow red. Last Stand lasts for approximately 10 seconds and significantly boosts the gray hairs' damage, damage resistance, and health gain while it is active. The Last Stand effect, however, is greatly reduced if they are not in 3 rank formation, so while it is active, do your best to keep them in formation and not move the unit around unless it's absolutely necessary. If needed, adjust their facing with no retreat so they can maintain control immunity. Remember that if the unit becomes scattered, it will not be able to use last stand and will become far more vulnerable. Keep your gray hairs together at all times. As for the charge, there isn't anything too special about it, besides that you should be in wedge before activating the ability. Charge is still quite strong even if used from three ranks, but if you have an extra second or two, get them into wedge for maximum damage and healing. In a pinch, you can also use the charge to relocate your gray hairs, as the charge is slightly faster than sending the gray hairs for a walk. A final note about the gray hairs. The three rank formation is ideal when faced toward the enemy for multiple reasons. The front row of shields will block for the unit, while the second and third ranks have a longer reach. It is still possible for the unit to fight even when faced the wrong way, but the ranks of gray hairs will have a more difficult time reaching the enemy. When turned completely around, for example, the polearm gray hairs will be able to reach, as well as some of the long swords, but the shields are not contributing. When in battle, point front towards enemy, and adjust the formation with no retreat as needed. You know what time it is? Battlefield example time, boy! There we were, assaulting Allenberg's A-point with our gray hairs. I actually had them come down the walls over the siege tower, so I quickly moved them into the tunnel where they'd be more capable. Gray hairs don't like fighting in open ground, and much prefer choke points. By maneuvering them successfully, I'm now able to steadily move them up, and not expose them to too much damage. A few berserkers come at our gray hair ranks, so we'll use last stand to make sure we deal with them swiftly. Now with the berserkers taken care of, we'll start moving out onto point, but making sure not to overextend. The enemy short sword was able to knock down about half of our gray hair wall, but with no retreat, we can get the gray hairs back on their feet and reform the wall. Confident in the gray hair ability to stop the stray cavalry, I get a bit of healing in. When I see our IPGs walking, I know that I should move up to support them. I lock down the enemy hero with my pike and put my gray hair formation right on top of them with no retreat. An enemy mall player now tries to hit the wall and knowing how much damage a maul can do, I'll activate Last Stand. This gives the Grey Hairs control immunity, damage resistance, and the extra damage they need to eliminate the maul swiftly. Seeing a clear path to the enemy muskets, we'll charge the Grey Hairs with the Cav. 
While the Grey Hairs are much slower, they still hit hard enough to take out an enemy hero. Only two Grey Hairs lost, and a point is taken. On this next example in Linwu Fortress, I'd like to demonstrate keeping calm and adapting to the situation at hand with the Grey Hairs. I can see Berserkers and a handful of other units on the stairs. I could push my Grey Hairs down to them, but overextending your Grey Hairs is very dangerous. Instead, you'll see me actually move the Grey Hair line back. I do this to accommodate the forward step that they will take when I use no retreat. Instead of trying to push the enemy, I'll let them make the first move. When the berserkers push to the top of the stairs, that's when I trigger no retreat and then last stand to burst down the zerkers. Just when we clear the stairs, I turn around to find out we're being flanked. This was surprising, but panicking is not an option. We'll use no retreat to quickly form a new front line, which blocks the enemy from pushing our team. Our last stand comes off cooldown at just the right time, which lets us withstand the enemy pike advance. Now here's where I see a clever play I can make. I don't want to keep getting smacked by the four brachial pikes that have strong arms and a long reach, so instead, we'll charge west to dismantle the enemy front line, and prevent them from getting behind us. This works out really well, but now our grey hairs are scattered. Using no retreat, we'll once again form a new front line. I now slowly and methodically push the enemy units back towards the stairs. With each batch of enemy units I encounter, I adjust the three ranks with no retreat, until there are no enemies left. We lost a single grey hair, but took out over 70 enemy units. Remember how I said grey hairs could flex on berserkers? Let's take a look at what separates the Chad grey hair from the virgin zerker. Like an anime battle, our units square up in the alley. Musket tries to blast our Grey Hairs with the bomb, but they are unshakable. The Zerkers charge, and we go Super Saiyan. By the time the Zerkers pop Frenzy, there's nothing left. Not even in the red, my friend. Not even in the red. So to clarify the more technical portion of No Retreat, we'll use an example that had me twisting my camera. We use our pike to stab through the wall, and then order the Grey Hair charge. Knowing that the charge will leave the Grey Hairs scattered, we want to put them back into formation. To do this, we have to twist our camera away from the ongoing battle, to position them properly with No Retreat. With the enemy unit now defeated, we can focus on finishing off the enemy hero. Since we activated Last Stand recently, we can still use a portion of the bonus damage to kill the hero, as shown by the glowing red blades. How about the grey hair charge? It does damage, heals the grey hairs, and lets them reposition. In this clip, I want you paying attention to when I'm using the grey hair abilities. On White Elk Fort, we've got a rather large open area to cross, so we'll order a charge to the other side. We'll use no retreat to make sure they're back in formation and catch up with our hero. I catch a glimpse of another paladin squad behind us, so I know I have to move quickly. We'll take on one unit with our grey hairs and use our hero to cover the other side. While I'm fighting, I'll use no retreat to change the facing of the grey hairs towards the new threat. At the end here, I'll use a mini charge so the grey hairs can regain some health, even though it was not necessary to kill the enemy unit. By doing this, we've gotten our grey hairs back out of the red zone and didn't lose a single one while helping out our team. Gotta set a good example for the youngins! And speaking of setting a good example, let's show them youngsters how to hold that A point on wall fort! Only the whole enemy team versus one squad of grey hairs? As long as I have my purple pill! Yeah! Not one step back, boys! No retreat! No surrender! Forward the grey hairs! Was their man dismayed? Not though the soldier knew someone had blundered! There's not to make reply! There's not to reason why! There's but to do and die! Into the A point of death! Charge the gray hairs! I don't know what I've been told! Gray hair here is mighty old! Back in my day, we didn't have bandages! We rubbed dirt in it! Uphill! Both ways! In the snow! Are you still listening to me? Those fucking gray hairs, I don't work. So no, the gray hairs didn't kill the entire enemy team, but I delayed their capture by a full minute and took out several units in the process. At the end of this game, the gray hairs had over 120 unit kills. My last battlefield example is on Riverlands Castle Assault. When I rounded the corner and saw the shield maidens, I realized this was going to be a fun battle. Now using everything we've gone over in this video, let's fight these maidens. We'll use last stand just before making contact and do our best to keep the enemy units 
unit on one side of the wall. I then made the choice to separate the enemy hero from his unit, as I'm confident in the gray hair ability against the maidens. Just as I thought I had gained the upper hand, however, a new challenger approaches and brought some serfs with him. I'll now use no retreat again, but this time to face the new threat and force the enemy heroes to move. My main objective is to move the enemy heroes away from the gray hairs and let them do their thing. Notice my camera movements and when I'm activating no retreat to keep the gray hairs in formation. Now I get pretty beaten up by these two heroes, but if you watch the ultimate pike guide, you know that full armor pike has a bit of magic to it. I'm able to continue commanding my gray hairs with a proper camera rotation and dance my way out of battle. You'll see me continue flicking the camera to adjust no retreat, but I also must focus on keeping myself alive. I place myself on the stairs where I can continue commanding the gray hairs and heal myself up. Santa Polax came down the chimney and my milk and cookies were ready. Now I'll make sure we activate last stand when available and regroup with our gray hairs. Here I assumed the enemy hero would try to run when he saw me, so we ordered a charge. He didn't run however, so the last major threat was dispatched. We finish off the last maidens and have a drink with the boys. They earned it. As for gray hair weaknesses, there are three main ones. The first is trebuchets. If you are on defense, a single treb can wipe out a gray hair formation as they are very densely packed. This is also true for siege equipment. The second main weakness is having their formation scattered and broken as you'll see in this clip. If the gray hairs become separated, they are extremely vulnerable. The third main weakness is their shorter reach. Pikes and polearm formations can safely stab at the gray hairs without the gray hairs being able to counterattack. Because the gray hairs must maintain formation to be effective, your movement of them has to be precise. A more minor weakness is that while the gray hairs do have shields in the front row, they are not a proper shield unit and are not meant to block enemy ranged attacks. The gray hairs are an awesome unit, and certainly my favorite unit of season 8. I like that they use a variety of weaponry to apply different debuffs to the enemy, and that they can shrug off control effects if you time their abilities properly. Because they have three different weapons, they can operate independently, and don't need a supporting unit to be played effectively. Despite their old age, I find the Grey Hairs to be a very flexible unit, as you can take them onto any map, offense or defense, and find a use for them. I always appreciate unique units being added to the game, and Grey Hairs certainly have a place in Conqueror's Blade. There's a little bit of technical skill involved with their movement, but I wholeheartedly recommend this unit if they look appealing to you. A self-sufficient unit that can hold the line in any game mode, this is the Grey Hair Garrison. If you enjoyed this unit guide, consider subscribing to the channel and liking this video. If you have anything to add, or if you have the actual numbers and details of the last stand ability, I'd love to see it down in the comment section of the video. If you have any feedback for me as a content creator, or anything I could improve upon, I'd love to hear that as well. My goal is to produce high quality, helpful content for the player base. Thanks so much for watching, this is Ironclad Lion and Ironclad Loba, and I'll see you in the next video.